Alright guys, so with this video, I'm going to be breaking down a no-gi match. We have Sean, who's a brown belt, who's been training for probably going on about 12, 13, 14 years. And we also have Angus, who's a blue belt, who's been training for a couple of years and he's quite crafty, as you'll see with this role. So let's get right into it, hey? So Angus is on top, trying to focus on his passes, stepping that leg in nice and close, trying to go into throwing Sean's legs to the side, but he's able to get a butterfly hook and create some space. And it looked like there he was kind of going for like a little bit of a, a back take, but Angus didn't have the right handles. So he's playing half guard at the moment, trying to keep that knee as a barrier, trying to work on a Kimura, but you could see Sean just postured up, scooping underneath the leg, which makes it very hard for Angus to move. And he's got a good underhook, so he's got a bunch of different things that he can do here. So he's trying to come up on the top, but Sean's got that whizzer, and he's able to bring him back down to the mat. You can see Sean trying to scoop the leg. Maybe it looks like he might be trying to work on going for maybe a leg lock, but he chose to just fall backwards and go into his guard. Now he's in a bit of an X guard, elevating Angus. So you can see Angus tried to roll underneath to go for a back take, but I think Sean's leg was in the way. So this is quite interesting what Angus is doing here. So you can see he's got his left hand scooping underneath. I think I should ask him, but I think he was trying to go into a false reap, which makes it very hard, or maybe even a K guard on the opposite side. But as soon as Sean got the underhook, it just completely cut all of that out and straight back into De La Hiva. So how about what we'll do, we'll break down the options of what Angus could have done in that position. So as you can see, uh, Angus was on his back trying to work from his De La Hiva and also into his reverse De La Hiva. Sean had that leg up. Before he basically nullified the position that um, Angus was trying to go over by getting an underhook here like that and shutting him down, you could see that he had this handle there like that. He was trying to create enough space by bringing that foot over and weaving this leg in here. Okay, so you can see the instep of the foot with this leg is on the back of, or on the inside of my, uh, my leg here. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to pull this one in. So if I'm lucky enough, I can start to kick my bottom leg under and pull this leg through here like that, where I can get this leg on the inside where I'm reaping the leg now. Now I can work on exposing uh, Nikita's heel in this position. More than likely, your partner's gonna be switched onto that and it's not always gonna work out like that. So as they try and keep the, the foot on the inside of your thigh, so I'll just go over it again. So as I weave this one over, Okay, I'm trying to pull this one in here. Okay, maybe I get a rear naked choke grip like this. Okay, or there like that. So, to kick this one under, he's going to want to keep it connected. So what usually happens is as I go to invert and pull that one in, I can roll underneath. This is still here, but now there's a lot more space for me to get that one there. Now I'm in my saddle where I can work on going into my heel hooks right there. Okay, so let's go over that one again. So just up here. So as you can see, he was in kind of in his reverse De La Hiva. He ended up going palm to palm in this position, creating enough space where he weaves that one inside there like that. Okay, now I'm going to invert, whether I'm like that or that. Okay, now as I roll, because he was trying to keep his base and stop that from happening, that's when I can start to create enough space to get my leg under. Then I can start to go for my heel hooks. You can also see the foot on the far hip too. So I'm assuming that he was either going to go into that one or you saw that foot go to the outside where he may have been going for his K-guard entry. So if I scoop underneath here like this, let me put that knee down for a sec, create enough space to invert, bring Nikita forward, okay, to make this leg nice and light. I'm gonna kick him over, I can start to use my foot in the armpit and now to create enough space here, this leg is going to kick that one out a little, so I can weave this one inside and hook here. I've got a lot of different options here in this position where I could maybe think about going for my straight foot lock. Okay, but we'll stick to the heel hooks. So I'm gonna push this one up. I can reinforce my grip by triangling my legs. Now in this position, 
I can obviously work on going into my heel hooks in that position as well. Okay, if he was to backstep before I had the heel hook, so just backstep over, okay, we're ending up in a 50 50 position, let alone weaving your leg into another position like the saddle. So let's do that K guard entry again. So just go over here, okay. So he had his foot here, but he also had it on the outside there like that. So scoop underneath, bring your knee to the mat, pull your partner forward, get this leg nice and light, kick them over. If you need to, you can kick in the armpit, weave that one over, you create enough space to hook here like this. Bring the foot up, then I can reinforce the grip. It's very hard for him to pull his leg out, okay? If I'm not successful in this position, he back steps over, I can use that to work into my 50-50, let alone start to use that to get into a sweeping position as well. All right, so going straight back into the match, De La Hiva for Angus, trying to invert. He's very good at going for Berenbolos, usually does that on a regular basis. And Sean scooped the knee, pulled him into a 50-50. So very common guard. And you can see both of them they're trying to, like you can see Angus on his back, he's triangling his legs to avoid Sean attacking his heel. So Sean's up on top working on a pass, trying to pull back to maybe attack the heel himself. So he's trying to scoop that leg, untangle the legs. And you can see now Sean in this position, he's laying down, he's triangling his legs because they both know the threats of the heel hooks. So you see he almost has his heel there and then you can see Angus turning his heel towards Sean, almost exposed there, very close and trying to get a collar tie to pull himself a little bit closer. So you can see that they're both trying to work for the heel hook by quite a difficult position. And you can see him hand fighting to avoid him going for the heel. And he chose to abandon that position. And then Sean was momentarily up on top, but did get sweep, uh, swept. He, um, as you can see, quite crafty, going back into his De La Hiva and taking advantage of that knee and that shield across Sean's stomach to make it quite difficult for passing. Okay, and limp legging out, circling around and getting, almost getting Angus's back. So you can see he's very tight in this position, trying to avoid Sean getting the hooks. He's quite high in this position. So let's see if he, he stays on top or falls over. So his seatbelt was good, but then again, he's very, very high, but he used it to get into a triangle. Oh, there we go. So quite tight. He was able to successfully uh, get back to a good position and then got the submission ultimately. Okay, Angus again going for a bit of a Barambolo. Nice, he's got a good handle of the hip. Uh, just looked like Sean's knee was in the way. So he's able to get up on top and you can see him scooping the leg here, trying to untangle the legs to maybe go for maybe a knee bar, threatening a submission. Angus is up on his knees, driving over his base and very nice. And that's the end of the roll using that momentum to dive right up underneath and get that sweep. Okay, so as you can see, they were both in the 50-50. We're gonna focus on a couple of different submissions you can do when you're in this position, and also how to expose a heel. They're in the exact same position. As you can see, they were both trying to go for the heel hook. So, uh, things we can do in this position, we'll keep it simple. So, if I go like this and I go around, from here, I can start to go for a tie hold with the legs crossed, okay? Um, also, another one as well, I can go underneath, hold onto the shin, reinforce the grip, so I've laced the legs and I'm leaning backwards and putting pressure on here. Neither of these are nearly as good as a heel hook, so we'll work on some very, very easy ways of how to expose a heel when your partner has the legs triangled. Right, so we'll just lock it up nice and tight there. Okay, so completely locked there. So first one, very, very simple. I'm gonna put my hand on the inside of his knee my hand on the ground, literally just do a seat to hip escape, like that, to pry the legs open, straight away I can drop down and start to work on attacking the heel. 
So as much as he tries to keep his legs together, let's go this way, very, very easy. So stiff arm, hip out, drop down, and you've got your heel hook right there. Okay, another one as well. When we're here in this position, okay, so it's up nice and high, I'm going to go underneath, hold on to the toes, I'm gonna fall backwards, and with my body weight, I'm gonna stretch this leg out, then from there, I slide straight underneath, and then I can go for my heel hook, depending on what grip you want, will depend on how you're gonna finish it. So here, scoop underneath, fall backwards, so the top leg's on the top of my bicep, I go up, straight away, dropping down into whatever grip you choose. Okay, so very, very easy ways of how to expose a heel, as well as uh, to other submissions. So hopefully you found this video helpful in one way or another. Hopefully you were able to take away some sneaky techniques of what to do or what not to do in certain positions. If you did want to see more breakdown videos like this, let me know in the comments below so I can start to get them underway. Along with, I just released a new Jiu Jitsu course. I've honestly been working on this for probably the last two and a half, three years. It's wrestling for Jiu Jitsu. So if you did want to successfully take your opponent down to the ground, whether it's gi or no gi, along with dealing with all the different threats of submissions that Jiu Jitsu has to offer, make sure you go check that out. It's in the description. And um, until next time, 